got a comment from my man uh KL. He says, earlier you said you were teased because you were your weight. Would you say that that motivates you and improve as fitness competitor? So, and we, you know, she mentioned that, yeah, that she was a bit overweight. So that really motivates you in your fitness process. I, w I wouldn't say I was overweight. It's just that um, I was big boned. Um, overweight, I think I'll be, you know, um, like uh, making it sound very um, weird drastically, but I was big boned. So, because I was an athlete, I was running 800 meters. So you know how 800 meters girls used to look. Petite, um, taller, you know, they have like flat stomach, a flat bum and all that. But with me, I used to have like, my legs were very big. I used to have like a tiny waist, but still, I used to carry a lot of weight on my glutes and my head, my legs actually. So I didn't look the part because back in the days, being skinny was an in thing. You know, everyone wanted to be skinny on magazines, social media, to be beautiful, you had to be skinny. So I struggled a lot to lose weight, to look like everyone else. So I was still looking good for someone, for a lifestyle, but for an athlete, I, I was big. Yeah, because I think, yeah, I think it's always been popular, especially in areas like from the 60s, 50s, 70s. I mean, but now since the last years, it's, it's more acceptable to be a little bit more fuller. Still, you don't want to be too big. You don't want to walk that fine line. You don't want to look like a stick, but you don't want to look like, you know, uh, a polar bear who just got off of, uh, you know, hibernation. Uh, so it's just, it's just we, we want to look balanced. It's just the balance, you know. You are fuller, but at the same time lean, you know. I don't want to be so big that um, you can't even see like, um, for instance, my definition, like this is a shoulder, that's the biceps and all that, or even too big that I don't, I, I would look like a bodybuilder because I don't see myself as a bodybuilder. I see myself as a wellness girl. So I also need to look within, you know, within what is expected to be a wellness person. Well, a wellness in, my, in my making a content, I, I've seen the last few years, I've been following bodybuilding for a long time. And I remember when bodybuilding first started, it was only men's bodybuilding, then women's bodybuilding came along. And there was other divisions like fitness came along and, you know, and uh, uh, figure. And then the other divisions, because I think they want to work with different body types. You know, you have like, well, this is for the women, like I said, again, who are more thicker in the, in the quads, a little bit, you know, more bottom heavy. And, you know, you look at divisions like figure, which is more women who are taller, a little leaner. And you look mm -hmm. at uh, bikinis for the women who more like, you know, the, the stereotypical idea of what women, what people, women will look, look like, more feminine, great lines, huge, huge jugs. So that's why I call uh, the two divisions, wellness and, and figure the TNA divisions, you know, they focus on yeah. the two things. But yeah, but then I did interview a young lady who got a pro card uh, last month, and she competed both in figure and in wellness at nationals. She owned a pro card in figure but she competed in wellness division you see that a lot is the uh, the divisions are starting to like especially i talk about like division like wins by the physique and even mm. physique figure how you can cross over sometimes depending how you look um according to my understanding okay let me take you back on how when i started with bodybuilding because as much as I, I, if ever I would wanted to start as a bikini, but my body couldn't allow me to have a bikini um, figure, um, a bikini structure, because I, I tried to lose weight, but my legs was just big. Also, there was figure, and then figure, my upper body is too small compared to my lower body. So that's why I went with um, the sports model before wellness was introduced. But then the moment wellness was introduced, it was actually my type of body, like the figure, everything, it was me. Because I have a very smaller upper body with a very smaller um, waist and I'm bottom heavy. So it was well suited for me because of my body structure was a wellness structure from the get go. So mm -hmm. I would say wellness is actually the bridge between bikini and figure. But then we focus a lot on our lower body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I, as I talk about this, how the visions are so much different. But you know, sometimes for people, we try to accommodate every type, yeah, every um, body structure. Like they, they are now trying to accommodate everyone to be part of bodybuilding because of ever if they didn't have wellness, it could have been difficult for me 
to continue competing because I'll have to work extra hard to, to develop my upper body in order for me to fall into um, figure and I'll have to work extra hard to lose my lower body so that I can have that V structure for figure. Yeah, because I know, uh, you know, with wrestling, she, she, she competes in, you know, physique and she'll do bodybuilding. I think she did figure for a bit. You know, it's about how you, where you fit in as a competitor as you grow in your process as an athlete. Uh, we have here, this is a comment from, you know, my man, um, Balls Deep. He says, uh, with all the sacrifices, why female bodybuilding? And you got to understand, you know, there's a lot of sacrifice you have to make as a bodybuilder. And you, you know, you mentioned how your family don't understand this much. You know, um, the time you have to put in. Sometimes, you know, you can't do the things you like everybody else do. Like I know sometimes your friends might want to go out someplace and you know, no, yeah. I gotta rest because I gotta get ready for my day. Sometimes you go to bed at 10 o'clock and then you have to get up, you know, by four or five o'clock to go work out because you have a job and you have a career mm -hmm. and you wanna, you know, you wanna stay into into sport, but you gotta it's a lot of sacrifices you make. You feel like all oh, the sacrifice is worth it in your mindset. For me personally, it is because I'm not doing it for other people. I'm doing it for myself. You know, it's me telling myself that I want to do, I want to accomplish something that no, not everyone can do it. Everyone would like to look like a bodybuilder, but it will take discipline and dedication. So out of 100% population, I would say maybe 10% of the people would actually want to do bodybuilding and actually continue and succeed in it. So it's not something that anyone, you can just wake up in the morning and okay, fine, I want to be a bodybuilder and then boom, you are a bodybuilder. So there's a lot of sacrifices. So for me, it shows that I need to be disciplined. You know, it's me being in control, that like I can control what I want in my life. If I want to be disciplined, if I put my mind into doing something, I can do it. And the fact that it's it's hard, it's the most hardest sport because it's, you, discipline is not only at the gym, it's, it's about everything. It's a sport that con it continues, you know, when you are sleeping, you need to think about are you getting enough rest? You know, even when your coach is not there behind doors, what are you doing? So it's all about discipline. It's not only when you're in the sport or when you're on season or off season. So it's a, a all round, all round a sport that you always need to be disciplined and also not having to do things because of your coach tell 